Welcome back! This is yet another video on the subject of Hungary and the interwar period. This time I'll talk about how the country initiated secret rearmament, which was in direct violation of the 1920 Trianon peace treaty. While in a previous episode I talked about the main reasons that led to the treaty itself, here I will focus on the military aspects of the document and how these severe restrictions were gradually circumvented by the government. As I discussed it in a previous video, after two failed revolutions, a new political system was established under the leadership of Admiral Horthy, so stabilization could begin. The treaty signed in the Grand Trianon Palace dictated that the armed forces should be limited to 35,000 professional volunteers with no reserve. They could not have heavy equipment, such as medium or heavy artillery, tanks, airplanes, anti-aircraft guns, anti-tank guns, etc. No battleships either, although it was unlikely that such huge vessels could be used on the Danube or Lake Balaton. The armaments industry was dismantled. Hungary could only manufacture pistols and rifles, nothing else. Even railways with double tracks were forbidden. For internal security purposes, 12 armored cars were allowed. Unlike Germany, which signed a secret agreement with the Soviet Union already in 1922 regarding military training and an exchange of technologies, Hungary could not have a silent partner. It was surrounded by hostile nations that viewed every decision and every step with great suspicion. As most of the industry was concentrated around Budapest and most of the country was flat, Hiding banned equipment and technology was very difficult. What's more, until the end of 1927, a control commission kept an eye on Hungary to prevent any cheating. In that same year, Hungary signed a treaty of friendship with fascist Italy, mainly because it was the only victorious power willing to assist. The army was reorganized into seven mixed brigades and two cavalry brigades, now with some heavy artillery and a few airplanes that were purchased from Italy in secret. A training program and youth organization, the Levente, was established for all teenage boys, while many officers and NCOs were outsourced to other organizations like schools, the police, and administrative bodies. While the Great Depression raged on, the first long-range plan, the Alud Plan, was created in 1932, it called for 21 infantry divisions and larger mobile forces, although most of the equipment was still left over from World War I, and expansion was only slowly achieved. At least 15 years were lost, with no high command, and only theoretical studies of modern weapons and planning, not to mention that building up a new armaments industry required a lot more time. In the 1920s, a few armored cars and German LK-2 tankets were acquired. These provided the basis for the future armored forces, still undercover as police units. A few heavy guns were hidden, while the training of pilots commenced in secret. In the late 20s, more training aircraft were purchased to create a reserve, but the first actual fighters, Fiat CR-20s, were only purchased in 1931. Italy was always more willing to sell military equipment, although by 1935, when larger purchases could be made, their models were lagging behind the latest German rivals. Hungary purchased Italian-made L3 tankets, Pavese tractors and Breda prime movers, then German howitzers and 1000 Ford trucks, followed by Fiat CR32 fighters, Heinkel HE70F bombers, and HE-46 reconnaissance planes, but the domestic industry started producing its own reconnaissance planes, like the WM-16 Budapest. At the same time, some equipment had to be returned due to technical issues with Italian aircraft. In the early 30s, Hungarian engineers attempted to develop indigenous designs, both airplanes and tanks. However, these proved to be inferior and problematic so the Avis 1, 2 and 3 planes, 
and the V3 and V4 tank designs were eventually abandoned. Based on foreign purchases, by 1937, while the army was testing the V4 against the Panzer Mark I and the Swedish L60, the first armored units could finally be set up using the L3 tankets, along with the 1st Fighter Regiment, which now had actual combat aircraft with no civilian markings. More bombers were acquired from Germany. The new Junkers Ju-86 planes constituted the 3rd Bomber Regiment, along with some remaining old Caproni 101s, while the HE-170s were used for long-range reconnaissance. Things were changing fast in the world of aviation. These models were becoming obsolete, so further expansion and new planes were needed. The small Danube flotilla, the River Guard, was officially under the Ministry of the Interior. It had a few gunboats and auxiliary vessels like patrol boats and minesweepers. In 1927, three more gunboats were purchased from Austria. By 1930, Hungary had 10 armored ships and an anti-aircraft battalion with 1,600 men altogether. However, due to budgetary constraints, no further expansion was achieved until the war. The army lacked motorization. In 1938, in the whole country, there were only 4,000 civilian trucks registered. Many of these had to be requisitioned to fill up the motorized units and supply convoys. Horse-driven carts remained the bulk of supply trains, while horses were also used along with bicycles and trucks to create smaller motorized units. By 1938, two motorized brigades were raised. These were the most modern units of the army. Outdated artillery guns were modernized in the 30s. More 105 and 149 mm guns were added, while mortars were replaced by 1935 in all artillery organizations. Back in 1928, the new Budapest Air Defense Command took control of the two outdated anti-aircraft batteries. It was expanded in 1935 into the National Air Defense Command. By 1939, each Army Corps had its anti-aircraft battalion with two batteries using 80mm Bofors guns. In 1938, the new HUBA plan called for more modernization and expansion of armored and motorized units in three stages, spanning all the way to 1943. The new order of battle included 21 infantry brigades, essentially light divisions, two cavalry and two motorized brigades, one air force brigade, along with three divisions of border guards and a few independent units. The existing seven mixed brigades all became army corps, each with three brigades, although there was never enough equipment, so only one brigade in each corps was fully equipped. The second became a reserve brigade, while the third remained a replacement unit, having only leftover weapons. The objective was to achieve parity with the neighboring countries. For this, manpower was adequate, but equipment was still lacking. With mobilization, full strength of the army was to be 250,000 men. While the army had plenty of officers, High-ranking officers were mostly older, having served in the Great War. More junior officers and NCOs were badly needed. The Ludovica Academy in Budapest was the main source of career officers, along with the National War College. The Levente organization provided three weeks of military practice for all 18-year-old males, but conscription for all males up to the age of 35 was reinstituted in 1938. Enlisted men were supposed to serve three years during peacetime, but this was reduced to two years due to a lack of NCOs, with 20 weeks of training each summer. In August 1938, at the Bled Conference, the Little Entente, Czechoslovakia, Romania and Yugoslavia, lifted all military-related restrictions on Hungary and acknowledged its right to rearm. Hungary, in return, pledged not to reclaim any of the lost territories by force. The Bled Agreement finally allowed the country to end all covert operations and continue rearming in an open and public way. For now, this is it. 
I will talk about the post-1938 efforts in the next episode. If you are interested in the topic of rearmament and Hungary's army between the two wars, I can recommend an excellent book, which I will put in the description. It's absolutely worth a read. See you in the next video.